Imike Yesu Kristo mu buzima bwawe akubera umwana. Yazanye no kugira ngo uronke ubugingo kandi uburonke busagutse. Bamwijambo riza no buzima ubuzima bwawe ubeho ubuhinduka. Uh, this uh, evening, I would like to touch right away where the film is set. So for time's sake, run with me to the book of Judges chapter 4. Chapter four. And Deborah said to Barak, Arise and take action. For this is the day. Arise. Take action. For this is the day. Tell your neighbor this is the day. Yeah, it is the day. This is the day. This is the day. Rise. Take action. For this is the day. Let me give you some context. The context of this portion of scripture is very amazing and intense. The children of Israel are in the promised land already. But they are confronted with some real issues. Joshua is dead. Joshua is dead. The people of Israel went back worshipping our gods. They went back worshipping our gods. Idolatry just increased in the land. They have turned their back to, on their gods. And therefore, because of idolatry, they have become slaves to their enemies. And we see all those enemies in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7. We have the high tight. We have the Amorite, the Canaanite, and all the other ites. But because God loves his people, even though they have turned their back on him, when they cry out to him, he raises judges. It was because of the unrighteousness of the people of Israel that God raises judges. God really didn't need judges if they had recognized that he was the king. But because they turn against him, he raises judges. Judges were deliverers. I like the Hebrew word for that. It's shotin. Shotin. Just say shotin. Yeah, because it's in Hebrew. It's shotin. Ah, shotin. Shotins mean champions. 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 God raised up shotins. They were deliverers. They were champions. I believe the kingdom of God needs more champions. And those champion agenda was to bring them out of bondage and bring the children of Israel to serve again the king. Under the rule of Deborah, Israel was at the deepest that it ever been before. Even a weapon could not be found anywhere in Israel. They have gone asleep. They were in true bondage. 
That's the context. And it's in the midst of this struggle. It's in the midst of this problem. That Deborah said. And the Lord said, Arise! And take action. For this is the day. How can a woman cry like that in the midst of such a deep crisis? Brother and sisters, hear my heart tonight. Those enemies are still around here. The Itaita are here. The Canaanites are here. This is just a type, but they are represented in the spirit. And their role is to subdue you. It is to render you not capable to do what God has created you for. Church of God, it's time to arise and move forward. Whatever may be happening in your family, in your ministry, in your personal life, in the life of your children, wherever it may be, this message, open your heart and let the Lord speak to you once again. I believe in the power of the word of God and I believe in the supernatural move of the spirit to take a word and manifest it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So open your heart tonight as we preach the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Imagine for a second what was going on in Israel in those days. You think your situation is bad? It was really bad there. You know, whenever the enemy surrounds you, it cripples you. And your gift cannot function any longer. The enemy surrounds you. You turn around the same mountain over and over again. You try, but you end up being where you began. Friends, I'm talking about real Christian life here. You do all that you know to do, but it seems like you don't advance. Difficulties. But we hear from Pastor Mbala that joy need to come doesn't matter what is going on in your life. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He has all the army. He has all the resources. And he still said, thank you for all the resources. What I really need is my joy. I have come this night to tell you whatever you are facing, it is an opportunity God has given you to emerge into greatness. If that problem does not exist, you really don't have a reason to exist. How can you know the value of light if you don't never been in darkness? When the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. It's because you are weak. 
You cannot understand the strength of God until you have been in place of weakness. Do not run from your enemies. Do not run from your problems. They are just opportunity for a blessing. Don't run. Arise. Arise. And move forward. For this is the day. This is the day. My God. They are in the promised land. And they cannot possess the possession. Can I, can I help you tonight? Can I? We play ping pong with the devil. Tennis. Bang. Bing. Bang. Boom. Bang. Bong. We are playing game. Most of the people in the church of God, they get the blessing, they lose the blessing. Then they go get it again, and the devil take it, and they go get it again, and the devil take it, and the devil take it, and they go get it again. I am here to tell you the game is over. The game is over. It is time. We possess our possessions. Obadiah 17 said, and unto man Zion there shall be holiness and there shall be deliverance. And the house of Jacob we possess their possessions. We need to rise up and possess our possession once and for all. We cannot get and lose, get and lose. Get it and keep it. Keep it. Keep it for your children. Keep it for your grandchildren. Keep it for this generation. Somebody said the game is over. Say it again. It is over. The referee just blow the whistle. Brrr, finish. Game is over. Can you hear the whistle? 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 The game is over. We are not here to play church anymore. We are here to rise up and move forward in the power of the Holy Ghost. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Living God. We have a work to do, we have a job to be done. We were saved for such a great work. The game is over. You know, the Bible says, in the midst of the crisis, Deborah said, all I need is a word. Mm -mm, that's all I need. Ah, you didn't hear me. I say in the midst of my struggle, I don't need anybody. I just need a word from the Lord. Because if I have a word, my life will not be the same. Something gonna happen. All I need is a word. And I have brought a word for you. Just like Deborah. Arise and act. Because this is the day. 
You know, the word arise is the Hebrew word kum. K-U-M. Kum. 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 Let, let me use my worshiper here. If he's sitting, now I want you to see what kum means. It doesn't mean a rise. You, you, you gotta go and understand what it was in the mind of Christ, God, when he's speaking. If it was my wife, if I want to say, baby, arise and let's go. I will just say, arise and let's go, baby. But that's not what kum means. That's not what kum means. <clears throat> kum, arise, is this. You've been at school before. And you're sleeping. You have to be at school at 8 o'clock. And, and, it, and it's 7.30. And your mom come in the house. And she want to wake you up. You're late. Kumi! Kumi! <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen! So Kumi... It's not a rise. There's an urgency. It's coming. It is the same word that Jesus used. Talita. Talita. Kumi. Talita. Kumi. Talita. Talita. Mean little girl. Jesus did not come and say, Talita, kumi. Talita, kumi. Apana chumi. Kumi. Kumi. Is the same root word for the word resurrection. <laughs> resurrection. Kusuka. It's not just wake up because you are sleeping, you are tired. Because kumi, it doesn't matter how deep you've been sitting in your tomb. When the word of the Lord comes to you, and the spirit says kumi, nothing can hold you back. Hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus was in the tomb, Lazarus was in the tomb, Jesus called him. He said, Lazarus, come forth. As come, arise and move forward. When you hear Kumi, you have to change your place. You have to change your place. You cannot be where you used to be. <laughs> you have to change your place. Tell my, tell your neighbor, I'm going to change soon my place. Don't think I'm going to be sitting here by you. Look at me. I'm about to change my place. I'm about to change my place. Don't look at me like that. Because very soon, you may not see me. Look at me very well. Because I'm about to change my place. I cannot remain sitting. I have to stand up. And when people ask you, where are you going? God is calling me. Did, didn't you hear the call? Didn't you hear the call? Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. You know, you know, when you hear Kumi, you don't have time to waste. Because I didn't wait for 20 years of counseling before I changed. I hear the word arise and act for this is the day. I don't need another day. This is the day. I don't need another day. This is the day. It is the day to rise up, to move forward. Go. 
Go back to it. Worship as you used to. Pray as you used to. Give as you used to. Help others as you used to. If you want to give a headache to the devil, do what the devil doesn't want you to do. Uh, yeah. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh mommy, yes. I'm so happy. Now I want you to see this. Here is one way to study the scriptures. Among, among many ways. If you want to understand the thoughts of God. Or the first intention of God. There is a law in the study of the word. That we call the law of first mention. In, for, in fact, you, you see the word the first time it's used. The, the first time the word is used in the Bible. It will give you a greater expression of what really God means. <laughs> you know Joshua. He was also there when they crossed the Red Sea. When people prophesied in the glory. But they didn't mention Joshua. But when they are confronting some pirates, some dangerous problems, then Joshua is mentioned. Oh, Joshua. He knew this struggle was just an opportunity. He didn't see the problem, he saw the opportunity. You sitting here. Where we tell you, there are Joshua's among you. And Joshua, Joshua, if the Amalekite did not come and attack your life, you will remain an unknown man. You will not be put on the stage. That's why sometimes I thank God for my enemies. David, David, if it was not for Goliath, you will not have been put in the public stage. The Bible says, do not despise small beginnings, but this night, by the Spirit of God, do not despise your struggles. They hold the pathway to release you into your purpose. Look at this crowd. If 50% or even 10% of the people sitting here will rise up and act, this church will not be the same. 20% of the people do all the job. The other one are indifferent. God say indifference can be a demon. Just sitting down. But this is the day. Let me give you two points and I close. In 1 Samuel chapter 17. David. David. Dawidi is about to emerge. In the fight with Goliath. I want you to think of David. He was just a young boy of 17 years. When he received his first anointing. 17 years. Taking on a giant. Goliath was his opportunity. To emerge. In a covenant. There's four elements. I will talk about one. One of the elements to have a covenant 
It is called covenant representative. David was the representative of Israel. Goliath was the representative of the Philistines. This is the type of Christ with Satan. That's what the Bible says. Whatever Christ has done for me on the cross, it is mine. I don't need to fight the battle because Christ fought the battle. He won for me. That's why I can come to the devil and say to the devil, I take back what belonged to me because Jesus did it for me. He Represented us. Yes, Adam was the first representative. Adam Through one man, we all become sinners. Through all one man, we are all going to perdition. Through one man, sin have entered us. Through one man, the nature of sin is in us. Through one man, we lost the key of the kingdom. Through one man we have become enslaved and slave of the devil. Then Jesus came again this time for the second round and he said to the devil ah you have defeated Adam and turned mankind to your slaves. But I'm coming as a man. Timothy said, there is only one mediator between man and God. The man Christ. Not the God Christ. The man, the man Christ. He came to represent us. You don't need to prove anything. You don't need performance oriented any longer. Jesus represented you. And he fought your battle for you. He get the victory for you. That's why you can say it. By his mercies, by his stripes, my representative stripes, I am healed. That's why you can say it. Greater is he that is in me that is in the world that's why you can say it I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me that's why you can say it it is no longer I that live it is Christ who live in me are you hearing what I'm saying you have a representative and he's still interceding on your behalf. He's still praying on your behalf. He is my representative. Jesus is my representative. I fear no evil. What he did, it's mine. It's mine. What Jesus did is mine. His victory is mine. His possessions are mine. He is my representative. He is my representative. Brothers and sisters, tonight, we're going to rise. We're going to hear the word of resurrection. Coming. Coming. And we're going to rise in the spirit. Look at David. Saul, Saul, Saul told him, You're not able. You're just a young boy. But this guy there is a trained warrior. I'm mean, here this night to tell you don't let anybody tell you that you are not able oh yeah just tell them you didn't make me 
You didn't call me. Don't tell me what I can do and what I cannot do. Saul, so, I've lost the fight. He has lost the fight in him. He has lost the fire of fighting. But David was burning with a fight. This night, this day, your fight need to come back in you. I say your fight need to come back in you. Your fight need to come back in you. Christian Dula, oh, don't touch me. Help me. Stop. Don't beat me. I stand, you stand up. And you move your shoulders. And say, devil, you come with the spears. But I, I come in the name of the God of Israel. Don't look at me like that, devil. This is not about muscles. I come in the name of Jesus where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Brothers and sisters, before purpose is released, Identity need to be established. The reason that people work for God without success is because they don't know who they are. And therefore, God took his time and he established the identity of Christ. You see, your identity is not your position. Your identity is not your profession. Listen, God says, this is my son. My son. As who you are. He didn't say this is my apostle. He didn't say this is my evangelist. He said this is my son. Sonship must be established first. Before ministry get released. Do you want to know? You are the son of God. This battle struggle that we have with Jesus and the devil was not about bread. It was about identity. If you are the son, he's doing the same thing to you. That's why you find yourself repenting for the same problem 25 times every day. Because you don't know you're a son. Receive that identity tonight.